Hello everyone, it's Wilson here. Today let's talk about graphing this function y equals negative square root of x and then plus 2. So the way that we're going to do this is to first graph the parent function y equals square root of x without the negative sign and then also without the plus 2. And so what we are going to do next would be to apply two transformations to the the graph of the parent function so that we can obtain the final graph of this function. So how do we do that? Uh, first, we are going to uh, think about which one that we're going to do first. So we do the the one with the minus sign here, which is a vertical reflection, or should we do the plus two here, which is the vertical shifting up of two units? Now, uh, you may be wondering which one should we do first, or does it matter? Uh, the way that we choose to do this is that we are going to just follow the order of operation. So what really happens is that we are going to... Uh, think about what happens after we have the value for the square root of x. So for example, let's say if I plug in uh, 1 in here, then I get the square root of 1, right? And will I be multiplying the 1 by negative 1, or would I be adding the 2 first? So the answer is that we are going to multiply first, and then after that we do the addition. Right? because we're going to do multiplication before the addition. So in this case, we are going to do the vertical reflection first. Okay, so we are going to start now. Now, um, when we do that, then we are not going to worry about the plus 2. So we are just going to multiply the whole function by negative 1. So now I see that I'm not writing the plus 2 here. Now, when we do the vertical reflection, we know that we are going to reflect the whole graph about the x-axis so now the the shape looks like this and then what really happens to the key point would be that because it's a vertical reflection so only the y values will be changed the x values we can actually still use the same x value so it will be zero and then next one is one and then the the last one it will be four as you can see and then what happens to the y values. The y values we are going to get what? We are going to get 0. It's still 0 because we apply the negative in front of the 0. We multiply 0 by negative 1, it's still 0. Multiply 1 by negative 1, we get negative 1. Multiply 2 by negative 1, we get negative 2. And so now we have the three key points. And then we can graph the this y equals negative square root of x. And 0, 0 is still the same point, so we are still getting this point over here, and then 1, negative 1. So the the point with the 1 as the y value now will have a y value of negative 1. And then this one will have a y value of 2, and then it should have a y value of negative 2 right now. And then we are going to graph this one. This is not the final graph, so I'm still going to use the dash curve to represent this. And I label this as two. So as you can see that, that those are the three key points that I'm showing here. Okay, now last one, last one is when we actually do the vertical translation or the vertical shift. And then, so what that means is that we are going to shift up uh, this graph two units up. So it's going to look like this, do two units up as you can see and so when we are shifting the graph two units up what really happens is that it's still a vertical transformation so the x values are not going to change so we still can just write down the x values right here and then we need to deal with the y values and then you may say what about the y values we are adding two to each of those y values right here so we can think of the Adding 2 here, adding 2 here, adding 2 here. And then what do we get at the end? So 0 plus 2, we are going to get 2. Negative 1 plus 2, we are going to get 1. And then uh, negative 2 plus 2, we are going to get 0. And in fact, you may not even have to do this calculation manually because if you get nice numbers, the easy way is to simply just move the whole graph, uh, number 2 graph up by 2 units. Now, how does that work? We only need to move the key points because if we're moving the graph, the shape doesn't change. So we have this point, we move up two units. So one, two, then now our new point is right here, which is the same thing as uh, the zero, two. So that will match with our calculation. But as I said, you may not even have to do this calculation. I just do this calculation here just for you to understand how it works. So we have, um, 
this shifting up two units, one, two, and then we get this point. And then um, this one shifting two units, we get one, two, so we get this point. And actually I should use the green color for this one, right? But the, the white dots are easier to see. So we get those three points right here. And then now that's our final graph. And we label that as three, and that is our final one. Okay, so that's it with the graphing. And there is one more thing that we gotta do is to find the domain of range. And um, as you have seen from the other videos, if we already have the graph, then finding the domain of range would be really easy by just looking at the graph. So the domain is going to be with the smallest x value first, and then that is what? That is zero. And we are including the zero, so we're gonna use brackets on right next to the zero, and then we'll actually keep on going forever to the right side, so we are going to get infinity. So that is the domain. And then what about the range? Now the range is that, um, there is no lower bound, right? So the, the the function will actually keep on going down and down and down forever. So we are going to get negative infinity. And then now what is the highest point for this graph? The highest point is what? It's this point and it has a Y value of two. So the highest value would be a two. And then we use brackets here because this the two is included. And so that is the range for this function. Okay, so that's it for this problem. I'm going to do more next time. Thank you for watching. See you.